additional features should it have? What distinctive features should it possess to attract the global man as such? Refer this question to yourself and then read the small booklet I have referred to and uh, when we meet again, inshallah, we will discuss your reaction to that and uh, if you are not satisfied, I will be available to answer any further queries, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with due respect again, uh, this question, please don't take it as um, impertinent, but uh, this rises to my mind, so I am asking as I am here now. Uh, there are people who are non-believers, you have been saying that already, but they follow all the rules, commandments and good things taught in the religions. They follow that. How would they be dealt with on judgment day? Although Allah is merciful and forgiving, we have been talking about forgiveness now, okay. and gracious, but wrongly or rightly, I don't know. I am told that whoever is an enemy to Allah, Allah is an enemy to such disbelievers. So Allah, I don't think Allah is enemy to anybody. And then there is, no, there is a humiliating punishment for the disbelievers and disbelievers will be put into fire. Now, will you please tell us now, now this forgiveness, mercifulness, all, and this punishment? First of all, there is nothing to apologize for. There is a very fundamental and important question of universal applicability, which you have addressed and you have granted me an opportunity to answer this question to the benefit, for the benefit of all the guests. So I am grateful to you. There is no question of your seeking forgiveness. First of all, on the issue of uh, such people, who are good, basically, soundly good people, who believe in revelations, whatever they believe in, but only in relation to God having given these injunctions and follow them honestly. What would happen to them? How would God treat them in the Day of Judgment? Now, this is a question which was raised, perhaps to your surprise, <coughs> 1400 years ago, by God, we speaking to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is raised three times directly in the Holy Quran. With slight variation of words, but always to the same effect, without variation. It speaks of those who believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It speaks of those who were Jews who had believed earlier in certain books and prophets. It speaks of Christians by naming them. It speaks of all others who believe in divine books. Having laid that foundation, then it says, if they do good deeds and believe in the answerability, this is a very important condition laid down believe in the answerability of the Day of Judgment, <coughs> believe in the resurrection and their being presented after death to give account to account of their doings here on earth. That is the meaning of believing in the Day of Judgment. The Holy Quran says there is no fear for such people. There is no repentance for such people. Their reward will be with God and they are guaranteed peace and eternal heaven. Now, could you expect a better promise from a benign God to all the people who in his eyes are good, true believers in whatever religion they believe, but act in accordance with the message of their own religions, do righteous good deeds here, and believe in the answerability. That's very important. The Holy Quran repeatedly lays emphasis on this aspect of religion, that if you believe in God, you may believe in a mythical God without realizing 
that you do not put his practice, do his, his injunctions or his uh, uh, expectations of you into practice in your own life. That happens when you really do not believe in life after death and do not believe in the question of accountability. Then you may live in a mythical world of your beliefs which would not bring about a change in your attitude to God or attitude to other human beings. So accountability is highly important. So this is in answer to the first part of your question. But at the end part you said a few other things as well. Would you kindly repeat or remind me of that so that I could answer the question in full? Yes, that is... Um, non-believers will be burnt in I'm fire. Okay, yes, I'll explain. The issue of hell and heaven is to be understood with reference to the Holy Quran where it has no ambiguity on the issue very clearly it uh, points out to one fundamental fact. First of all the verse you quoted says those who hate God God hates them. That's right. And you said God hates nobody. Enemy. You said enemy. I say this is true because the hatred begins not from God but from the others. And those who hate God, what does it mean? If you hate a creator, you hate his creation. If your enemy to even an artist, you would burn his works of art and destroy all his efforts. So it is unbelievable for man to believe in a principle that if you believe in destruct destruction of goodness, you must escape the consequences of that madness and you should be uh, left free to do whatever you like and run away with it after your death. If you accept this, then you deny that fundamental principle which, to which I referred to earlier, that is the question of accountability. Remove accountability and there will be no order left in the life here on earth, even in the governments of those who do not believe in God. Even in application to man-made laws, it is always accountability which keeps order in a state. And the lack of monitoring that, uh, you know, that monitoring the fact that people do follow the law, not only in letter but also in spirit, is what determines the perfectness of the, of the state of peace in any, deter, any particular state. More people are mindful of uh, their duty to the spirit, led to the letter of the law and the spirit of the law, the more peace would entail. And the less you feel yourself accountable, the stricter becomes the legal measures to find you, to capture you, and to bring you to law. But if there is a total lack of faith in you, in the principles of law, in the principles of accountability, then nothing can be done for such a society. So God is an enemy of those who are enemies of God, is something with which, from which you cannot escape. If you do, you escape into chaos. You escape apparently from the hell in the hereafter, but you create a hell for yourself here on this earth. As far as the concept of hell is concerned, it is made very clear in the Holy Quran that each man makes his own hell. There is nothing which comes from outside. And the hellish souls which are born here know that they are, sub they are hellish. 